What's up everyone, it's Aaron Schatz, Editor-in-Chief of ASC Publishing, and this is another ASC Labs video review. Today we'll be doing the Sapphire Edge HD4 Mini PC. This is review ID 42475. You can check out this and all our other reviews by going to www.asclabs.com. Let's get right into this. First things first, let's see what the HD4 has in its packaging. You get some literature, driver seating for Windows, eh. AC adapter, power cable, notice it's like the laptop style with the three weird things, an HDMI to DVI adapter, actually very very handy to have, I'm glad Sapphire actually packaged this along, and an actual HDMI cord, also pretty handy to have along because most people don't realize when you actually hook these things up, you actually require an HDMI cord to use. So. Bravo to Sapphire to actually including this stuff in the in the packaging. Oh, and obviously you get the HD4 as well. The HD4 is a mini PC, and this is the entire computer. There's no optical drive, obviously. You actually, to be honest, when have you actually used an optical drive in the past year? I actually don't think I've used my optical drive in the past year and a half. I, I know I've reviewed optical drives, and yeah, it's handy to have one around, especially an external one, because you could obviously use an external one in something like this but even for installing new operating systems I use you know USB flash drives and such so having an optical drive really not that important anymore actually having anything besides USB storage for removable storage really not that important anyway uh, yeah it would be nice to see a card reader but eh, USB works just as well right here is the stand for the HD4 and it actually mounts on the bottom here. You can see a screw hole in the bottom right here. And just screw it in. Nice and tight. And there you go. And that's how the unit is supposed to actually lay on your desk. Now you're asking yourself, why would it be designed to do this? because it seems that the space saving design would allow it to be tucked away somewhere without this large base. Well, you can do that as well. Just remove the base, lay it on its side, good to go. So, multiple ways to use this. Let's take a closer look around the HD4. On this side you have a single power button, right here, and an indicator light for hard drive activity. It's white, and then the power light is blue. In the front, you have two hidden USB ports, and as you can see, hold that down for you. As you can see, one of them is USB 3 with the trademark blue color, and the other one is USB 2. And this just pops right back in, like so. Switching over to the top and the bottom, actually, you see vent slots right here and right here on the bottom. These are for cooling the unit, and there is a fan in this unit. It's not whisper quiet by any means, but it's not really loud. You'd be really hard pressed to actually hear it from like five feet away. So if it was in an entertainment center, you actually wouldn't hear it at all. Going around to the back of the unit, you see the various ports. You got VGA, HDMI, two USB ports, Ethernet, the AC adapter port, speakers, and microphone. Unfortunately, we really don't feel like there's enough USB ports on the back of this. For instance, I would remove this and put two or four more USB ports on there, regardless if it's USB 2 or 3. An input device takes one of these ports at least, and if you have multiple input devices, you're, you're already gone. And then you actually can't connect anything else. The other thing that this unit doesn't have is Bluetooth, which is really surprising for something like this. It has Wi-Fi. It has Wi-Fi up to N. So that's, that's pretty good. But without Bluetooth, that means if you want to use Bluetooth in this, one of your USB ports is going to be taken up by that as well. So with only two USB ports in the back, you're actually going to run out of USB ports very, very quickly. So if you have this, you might want to invest in a small hub, but then it really defeats the purpose of having this small type of unit here. So we would like to see additional USB ports in the future models of this. The Sapphire Edge HD4 comes complete with a Celeron 8. 47 processor, which is a 1.1 gigahertz dual core CPU. 
it's not a core processor by any means, so you're not going to get you know really really awesome performance out of it. But form factor wise, we're talking about right. This is this is why you would buy something like this. It's not because of the raw horsepower. Granted, it still has four gigs of RAM in it. It has a 320 gig hard drive. Hard drive is only 5400 RPMs though. We would like to see like an SSD in here. An SSD in here would actually be really good. So. They actually make multiple variants of this. One of them doesn't have RAM and the hard drive is not included as well. You can put your own RAM in here and put an SSD in here. This thing will be a lot faster than having a spindle drive in there. And, and really, an SSD in something like this would, is the intended use case for it. You know, you're not going to be storing any of your media on this directly. This is for basically plugging into a home entertainment center, having this stream everything, and you can watch everything on it. So we would see an SSD in here to be a highly sought after feature. Because this is an Intel based system, you're going to have Intel embedded graphics. Now it's not that big of a deal. Remember, form factor we're talking about. Don't expect to have, you know, amazing performance out of something like this. But the integrated graphics that Intel provides nowadays, perfectly acceptable for most tasks that you're going to be doing with this. For instance, playing videos off the internet, playing, you know, DLNA content and such like that. No, you're not going to really get a lot of gaming performance out of this. In fact, you might not want to consider this at all if you think it's going to play something like Minecraft. Minecraft is a very, very interesting game. It doesn't require that many resources, right? Because it's all blocky and stuff. That's not the case at all. Minecraft is actually very, very CPU intensive in addition to the graphics. You know, there's a lot of actual additions to the game like fancy, smooth lighting and such and other calculations that go into the game. So the CPU on, on this unit actually makes Minecraft run really slow. And it's unfortunate because something like this would be you know, pretty cool to run Minecraft on. But I was running and it had about 20 frames per second on average. And you know it kind of dipped to lower than 10 in a lot of circumstances. So playing Minecraft isn't really the best use of this. Remember, form factor. There are three different use cases that I see for the HD4. One of them is entertainment PC, you know, something like streaming DLNA content and stuff like that. Two is internet browsing. Basically, you attach this to uh, your TV and you have a big internet browsing TV now. And the third one, workstation duties. And what do I mean by workstation duties? I mean, form factor, great form factor, side of your desk, plug all your stuff in there, and if you're working, what do people generally do at work nowadays? Light browsing the internet, light word processing duties, light spreadsheet duties. The HD4 handles that perfectly well. Absolutely no issues whatsoever. The other two use cases, you know, like the internet browsing and entertainment duties, actually, the HD4 handles those pretty well too. One caveat on the internet stuff. When you're going to YouTube and you're viewing like the higher resolution content, when you actually put especially flash flash videos in higher resolution for full screen like we were playing this on a 1080p screen occasionally you'll see a stutter and in some videos not all of them but in some videos they just stutter all over the place so it might just be the codec that's being used uh, we doubt that it's the internet issues you know going around but you know it, it's it's stuttered in some places but for the most part most videos had no problem even in full screen you know, we had no problems actually playing the video in the little window in the actual browser, but we just, I mean, I really, really think it's just the flash video format that just is garbage nowadays. HTML5 video is just really, really, we just need HTML5 video to come. We need this native stuff nowadays. Forget flash. Flash is old. Get rid of flash. The third case that I talked about was basically using this as an entertainment PC. And you would have, obviously, something else in the home that you would stream content off of. You're not going to store your content on this thing. It's only got a 300 gig hard drive about. And even if it didn't, you're not going to store the content on here. It's going to be on a network streaming from a server. And using a server to play, to stream content onto this, this handles everything you could throw at it. You know, the support is good. Excellent support for playing back video. I played MKV. I played, you know, tons of other DLNA content, had no problem, full screen, you know, very high uh, bit rate, absolutely no problems playing this. VLC, anything you throw at it, plays without a hiccup, no issues there. When you first set up the HD4, you'll actually be greeted with FreeDOS. They, 
Sapphire actually puts free DOS on the HD4 when you actually buy it. That's all well and good, and you can throw whatever operating system you want at, but it's curious because Linux works perfectly well right off the bat. For instance, I installed Kubuntu 13.04. Everything is recognized. All the hardware works totally fine. I mean, that's actually one of the benefits of using Intel hardware. They support open source highly. So basically, everything works right out of the box. Once, once you install everything, it just works right out of the box. Uh, install the 64-bit version, by the way. This is a UEFI-capable uh, motherboard, so no reason not to install the 64-bit versions. We would like to see Linux right out of the box. There's no reason to it. It's free, open source. They can use that instead of free DOS. So there's actually no reason that Sapphire just can't put you know, Linux on there. And if you want to put Windows on it after, you could do that. It's, it's really not stopping anything from happening. So future, maybe, hopefully, we'll see. Uh, I did make this a suggestion to them. So hopefully they take it. But if not, eh, you just throw in whatever operating system that you want to put on here. One thing that we found a problem with this is actually availability. Couldn't find where to buy it from. But we are assuming that the HD4 will be similar in price to the HD3 model and it's hovering right around $350. Remember, I'm gonna say it again, form factor, you're not paying for pure horsepower, you're paying for the size of this. And for the intended uses of this, the HD4 is fine at what it's targeting. Home entertainment, internet browsing, workstation duties, all that stuff, it's fine. 350 may seem a little steep, but remember, form factor we're talking about. You know, it's, it's light, sits on the corner of a desk without a, without a problem. You could tuck it away in a cabinet, do whatever you want. Serves its intended purpose very well. ASC Publishing would like to thank Sapphire for sending the Edge HD4 Mini PC for review today. For ASC Labs and ASC Publishing, I'm Aaron Schatz. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to our RSS feeds on ASC Labs and subscribe to our YouTube channel, ASC Labs. You'll be informed of our content. You can post like criticisms, questions, whatever. Become a member of our forums, post content there, you know. We like to hear all the information. We like to hear a lot of criticism and such. You know, in the past I've heard that people are like, oh, you know, you should go into a better area. Well, I'm hopefully in a better area. You can obviously hear me a lot better. So, you know, we, we do read the criticism and we try to... Uh, you know, take it with respect. So, you know, keep the comments coming. We, we enjoy reading them. Especially me. I, I enjoy reading them a lot because <laughs> they're usually directed to me of, like, how bad I'm doing or how good I'm doing. Usually it's how bad I'm doing. Either way, whatever. Thanks for watching.